in the first half to propel the Cards to victory. They made four threes in total in 24 minutes for the senior from Sarasota, Florida. Youngstown State is in the red. The Louisville Cardinals in the white, and they own the opening tip. And Youngstown State starts in the man-to-man. -man. The entry pass from Warren knocked away. Penguins on the run. Boy, that was a really good job by Louisville to get back on defense. The offense and the defense both nearly smothered official Pat Driscoll, who was trying to get to the baseline. In traffic, driving and scoring, Quisenberry. And we've got an offensive foul on Quisenberry. And he picks up his first. All right, let's take a look at your Ford keys to the game with Dan Bonner, Penguins and Cards. Well, for Jared Calhoun and his guys, they have to be aggressive and they have to be efficient. In other words, they've got to score on a high percentage of their opportunities. That's the only way they're going to stay in the game. And for Louisville, they're bigger, they're stronger. They just have to play to their strengths. One Tuesday at Miami, 87-74, shot 53% as a team. And they've got a three. And that's one of their strengths. I mean, certainly that guy's not bothered by the fact that the three-point line's a little further back. Wara pulls down the rebound. That three-point line this year, a little bit further back, 22 feet, one and three-quarter inches. Back from 20 feet, nine inches away, and it doesn't stop Perry from pumping up the jumper. Five nothing early, Louisville. That's just a great job by Louisville to get into an offensive sequence where they could get an easy shot in transition. That's really well done. Cardinals were third of the conference a season ago. They made almost nine threes per game. But Hannon. Out to Wara, another board early for Wara. Youngstown State is a team that really likes to drive the basketball. Let's see if they can manage that to, to finish the plays against that Louisville size. Enoch against the double team. Works his way through the paint and oh, wow. old school. Wow. That looked like a sky hook, Dan Bonner. And I actually thought Darius Perry did not do a very good job helping Enoch. He just stood there. He had to go to some place uh, where he could get open and where he would draw his man to make it an easy shot for Enoch. But it didn't matter. Enoch went against two guys at the old time hook. First seven points of the game belonging to the Cardinals. The wing jumper just a bit too strong, but batted out after the miss by Akuche. Now, Akuche is a guy who's going to have to be able to score, particularly from the outside, and that's their guy right there. You have to stay in front of him. He can shoot the three, can Quisenberry, but he's at his most dangerous driving the ball. He averaged almost 14 points per game as a freshman, and that led the team a season ago. Wara muscles his way into the basket for two. It's really hard to pressure, as Youngstown State was trying to do, when you get the ball into the middle of the pressure against a guy like Wara, who can handle it and take it all the way to the basket. Had his first double-double of the season, 10th of his career in the win at Miami with 23 points and 12 rebounds and a foul on the three-point attempt. Well, Akuche is a guy who can shoot the three. He thought shot about 37% last year, made 28 of them all together. And that was a deep try. Darius Perry, a little too aggressive, picked up the foul. Youngstown State is coming off a win Tuesday in its first game against Teal College out of Division Three in Greenville, Pennsylvania. 101 to 53, and they shot 53% as a team. But this is where they struggled. They were just 12 of 22 from the free throw line. Well, it's still building at Youngstown State. They were a team of freshmen and sophomores last year. I read someplace where they were the 307, number 317 in terms of experience last year. So they got all those guys back. And they really feel like they can take a step forward in the horizon. They won six games in a row in the middle of the season last year in league play. Did that for the first time since 1998 in program history. They also made 303 three-pointers. They obliterated the old school record, which was 270, and they knocked down over 300 threes a season ago for a school record. Uh, here they're showing a little zone right at the moment. Started out looking like a 1-3-1, one, one, but then it rotated more into a 2-3. That is a three-pointer out of the corner for Wara. Moore is a tremendous offensive player. 
Averaged 17 points per game a season ago. That was sixth best in the ACC. Laura has showed his inside-outside game with a bucket on the interior and then that three on the last sequence for Louisville. And that was an open three-pointer for Youngstown State. They're going to have to make some of those. Wow, what a play that was. Great pass by Sutton, but Enoch makes that play by catching it, turning, and putting it in the basket before he comes down. Senior from Norwalk, Connecticut, 6'10 and 255 pounds on the inside for the mill. Bohannon was fouled on the play by McMahon. He'll get a couple of free throws when we come back. It's all cards early. 14-3 again. To put their very versatile offense on display. You want somebody who can score outside? Well, Ryan McMahon can do that from extremely deep. One of the two three-pointers for Louisville. And then Stephen Enoch. This looks like Cliff Hagen. I know Hagen was a Kentucky guy, but that's Stephen Enoch scoring that one. And then Jordan War, he can score any place on the court, makes the other three. So this is a Louisville team that can hurt you inside, hurt you outside. We've seen Youngstown State miss a couple of three-point shots, and I think if the Penguins are going to stay in the game, they're going to have to make threes. Wara made four three-pointers on six chances at Miami in that season-opening victory on the road in ACC play. You know, the only question about Wara ever in his career was his commitment to the defensive end of the court, and that has really improved uh, as he has spent time here at Louisville, but there's no question about his offensive ability. He can drive the ball to the basket, he can score in the mid-range, and obviously he can shoot the three. Preseason first-team All-American, preseason player of the year in the conference. Average close to eight rebounds per game a season ago. That was in the top ten, eighth in the conference. For the junior from Buffalo, New York, put his prep ball at Vermont Academy. McMahon fouled on the dribble by Quisenberry. And that's a different aspect of Ryan McMahon's game. He is much more likely at this stage of his career to give that pump fake and drive the ball to the basket. You know, he, his, he started as just simply a three-point shooter, but he's really worked on his games. He's had a little floater. He drives the ball to the basket a little more, takes a few more two-point shots than he used to. That's a pass. Oh, wow. Steven Enoch, an easy two. Enoch had a double-double in the win at Miami. 12 points, 12 rebounds to set a career high and tie for the team lead. Well, every time Quisenberry comes off the screen, Louisville is in effect double-teaming, and they're really staying with him, forcing him to give up the ball. Top of the scouting report for the Penguins, Quisenberry. Fight on the glass. There was a whistle. Garrett Covington was in there for Youngstown State. It's going to be on Sutton, his first. Well, Sutton is irritated with himself that not only did he almost tip the ball in for Youngstown State, but then he couldn't grab onto it. Ball bounced out of his hands, and that's how Covington was able to retrieve it. I can sign 12 autographs in six seconds. Twenty-seven starts a season ago for the Penguins. He can score. Well, he can. He's very versatile. You mentioned his defensive prowess. He usually guards the other team's best perimeter player, and he's matched up against Wara. As Youngstown State showed that zone defense just the one time. Again, it's Enoch. But they have no answer for Enoch. Enoch is showing you he can go to either hand on the inside. Very smooth so far. You're going to have to try to attack him, force him to give up the ball. He's got eight points in the first half. Average 9.4 points a game a season ago. Second chance for the Penguins. Just about 14 and a half minutes to go in our first half of play. Second game of the season for the Cardinals after the win against Miami on Tuesday. In the paint, Avenue was closed off, but the turnaround is good from Bohannon. Bohannon only six feet six. 
but he can really operate on the inside. Enoch just has his hands up, and that's all you have to do. <laughs> Michael Akuche was, wasn't even looking at the ball, and he paid the price for it. Here, Akuche, he's just overmatched on the inside. You really have to attack Stephen Enoch. He played in 34 games last year and had a total of six assists. So Enoch is not a guy who's going to pass the ball. At least his history would indicate that when he gets it in there, it's usually going up. The data supports it, Dan. Although in this game, his data reads four for four from the floor. Eight there's, points. There's no other data that you need to read. <laughs> That's a lot of data. Nina on Perry, rather. So it's Perry on the drive, basket and foul. Foul is on Morgan, his first, just into the lineup for Youngstown State. Enoch comes out. Aiden Nguyen comes in. He's a freshman from Dublin, Ireland. Ball came to Aurora. Well, you can't give him second opportunities. And again, I think that's just the Louisville size. Really bothering Youngstown State. It's a 22-8 lead, seven points for Wara in the first half. Youngstown State stepping out of bounds. Well, a lot of guys who take three-point shots, Tom, as they load up for the three-point shot, they step back. And now with that line moved closer to the corner, guys are still stepping back, but they don't realize that they're stepping out of bounds because that line has moved. To the international distance of 22 feet, one and three quarter inches. From 20 feet, nine inches away. Last season. Oh, All right. I mean, that was a catch and a fadeaway from three. Doesn't matter how good you are defensively. Unless you're nine feet tall, you're not going to knock that one down. Second three of the game for Wara. Has a miss from the floor. Big rebound on the inside by Williamson. Williamson has shown himself to be a very smooth kind of player. He's a freshman from Rock, Rockwall, Texas. Coming over the top, there was a foul against Igehan. And back to the Penguins. Well, Igehan, of course, is a guy who he's in the game now because Malik Williams is injured and can't come in. But Igehan is a very raw kind of prospect. If you can get him to a spot right now where he can dunk the ball, he's a very impressive dunker, but he's still learning the game, has not really played that long. Well. You know, one of those European guys was playing soccer until they realized that his size, that might be a waste. Defended that play well, although it will stay at this end of the floor. You mentioned Malik Williams. The junior had foot surgery in September. Will be out an extended length of time, six to eight weeks. Penguins with a three-pointer. Akuche. Well, Akuche hits that one, Tom, and that's he's a guy that's got to be able to score, particularly from three-point range, if Youngstown State is going to have any success at all. Akuche with four points in the first half. This is a three-pointer. Too strong from Perry. Well, Perry has been really good defensively, and he's been very difficult for Youngstown State to defend as he attacks on the offensive end. First three-point miss for the Cards. Wara had made the other two threes on two attempts. Overzealous defending on the inside and a foul. That goes against Gahan. His second, North Carolina, were all number one seeds in the tournament last year. Seven teams in the ACC, including Louisville, to the NCAA tournament. You saw it. Wara on the bench. They changed one of his threes to a two-pointer. So he went back and reviewed it. Our officials today, Pat Driscoll, Wayne Gladden, and John Gaffney. Again, one of the Wara three-pointers reduced to a two-point jumper. So that paperwork out of the way, and it's the Cards and the Penguins. First time ever that they have met. Louisville went 20 and 14 a season ago, 10 and 8 in conference play. 
Quick move on the inside and a basket from Thomas. Well, Thomas comes off the bench at that five spot on the inside, and he is only six feet eight, but he weighs 265. He uses his body very well. Williamson, pull up. Cathcart had the board. Cathcart is a guy who can shoot the three. He's really got to get himself in position where he can get an open look. Inside of 11 minutes to go in the first half. Just, with us. They're just switching everything out on the top. Youngstown State can't get any room to breathe. Morgan glances at the shot clock, down to four. He'll take a three and hit the front rim. And the oop, and Williamson on the business end. Darius Perry's decision-making has just been outstanding here in this first half. He could have thrown that ball earlier, but he waited until Williamson got in perfect position and then made an excellent pass. Five assists now in the first half for Darius Perry. New shot clock. Akuche got his man in the air. Now, Akuche made a nice move there, and he scored, Tom, but when he initially caught that ball, he was open from beyond the three-point arc, but he wasn't ready to shoot it. He was too slow getting ready to pull the trigger. That was Kimball on the drive, trying to dish, but a foul was called. That's on Simmons and his first for Youngstown State. We had a great conversation with Chris Mack, the second-year head coach of the cards prior to the game today and he's like any other coach dan you just don't know what you're going to get but you've got to come out of the gates with that acc game on the road and he was very pleased with the effort by his team well, it's funny since it's a conference game <laughs> the ball was going out of bounds but it bounced off referee Dwayne gladden that's a break for youngstown state traveling, by. traveling gives it back to louisville Louisville got back very effectively, but Chris Mack was talking about the fact that you're so worried because you're opening with a conference game. For your first game of the season, usually you'd have about 40% of your offense and 40% of your defense in. And now, though, since it's a conference game, you feel like you got everything in. You don't know how the guys are going to react. And there was some first game jitters, but they overcame that. They certainly did. They had a 19-point halftime lead and led by as many as 32 in the second half against Miami. And we're going to get an offensive foul against the Penguins and Bohannon, his first. Youngstown State, every time they catch the ball, Tom, they're trying to get a little closer. Every time they're trying to get closer, Bohannon that time has an open opportunity from about four feet, but he likes to take the ball to the basket and a really nice play by Kimball just to stand there, stand his ground and take the charge. 75% from the floor so far for the Cardinals. 12 of 16 on field goal attempts. They're getting great shots. Kimball had it blocked. Enoch was there to clean it up. Wow. Thomas is guarding Enoch, and Thomas went to block the shot. And sometimes when you just drive the ball to the basket, if you force the defense to help, that's going to create an opening for somebody. And that time it was Enoch. He's got 10 points in the first half. He had a double-double in the first game against Miami. He did, 12 points, 12 boards. He was 5 of 7 from the floor. McMahon with a change of direction of the baseline. Lamar Fresh Kimball. Devin Morgan brings it up for the Penguins. Kimball, of course, the transfer from St. Joe's. Up against three defenders, and le that left a man wide open, and Jameer Thomas to slam the follow, and four points for him. Thomas has been very active since coming off the bench, and that's one thing that we talked about with him. He is very, very aggressive inside on offense. On defense, he's just a little overmatched. He knocked a little too big for him. Twelve points now. For Steven Enoch, into double digits in the first half, and he's going to the line when we come back. For all of the heroes who serve us, T-Mobile's offering 50% style sweeping hook shot. This is just a great play. 
Or he catches the ball. Now watch him right in the middle of your screen. He's working hard for position. He doesn't get the ball. But when the drive to the basket occurs, he is in great position. And Tom, did you see what he did? He didn't stand there and watch. He stepped toward the basket as his guy was driving the ball. And that put himself in great position for that rebound. Big guys have to be able to move around on the inside. And even when they don't get the ball, they have to stay engaged because lots of you get lots of opportunities when people drive the ball to the basket. Got his fourth career double-double on the road against Miami. He's well on his way to he five. He certainly is. Scored in double figures 17 times a season ago. Second year in the program after transferring from Connecticut. And looking for the old school three point play. Eighty two percent from the line a season ago for Enoch. Well, you get a big guy and a guy who can score inside when you get to tough situations. That guy's going to get the ball in there. And if he either can score or make free throws, that makes him unbelievably valuable. away by Williamson. That whole sequence, Tom, started because Akuche was not ready to shoot the ball when he caught it on the wing. Now, I'm not saying he should throw up shots against great defense, but he was open. He had a look from three. He didn't take it. They passed the ball around nicely, but it ends up with a block shot. Christian Bentley, number five, is into the lineup for the Penguins. He's got the ball right now. Akuche, deep three. Oh, I got maybe a little too far that time. <laughs> Sometimes you're open and there's a reason for it. <laughs> Kimball with the entry pass. Immediate double team right back to Kimball for three. Angular rebound to Covington. Well, for a guy who's not noted for his assist, that was a really good look by Eno. the seven-minute threshold of the first half, and a foul is called against the Cardinals. Louisville has been very aggressive on the defensive end. They're really attacking the dribbler, and we said one of the things Youngstown State likes to do is drive the ball to the basket, and Louisville has been able to apply pressure against the ball, but still deny a lot of that dribble penetration, and as a result, the Penguins have struggled. Chris Mack took the cards to the NCAA tournament a season ago, lost in the first round. Well, won 20 games during the course of the regular season and postseason. Knifing move from Christian Bentley. Well, there's the, there's that dribble penetration that we talked about. That's what the Penguins are looking to do. You have to cut that off. Just sort of hanging around here in the first half. Kimball did not get the bounce. Enoch did not get the bounce into the corner and retrieved by the Penguins as Covington ran it down. Tom hanging around is a good description of what Youngstown State has been doing. They are 0-7 in their historical matchups against the ACC. They last played at Pittsburgh in 2018 and lost 69 to 53. Shot clock is down five. Bentley, the recognition, the crossover dribble, and he lost the handle. Williamson filling the lane, double fisted. And Louisville has gotten down the court in transition pretty well. That is a smooth operator and a good looking athlete. Double fisted jam, four points, Williamson first half. Covington shook his defender. The shot lacked the necessary direction and distance. Just 32% shooting in the first half for Youngstown State. McMahon, six points, a couple of threes. You, just, you simply can't forget about him. But, you know, yeah, he's pretty far behind the line, but you, you, every time he catches the ball, you got to go to him. You cannot give him that kind of room. He made 53 three-pointers a season ago and shot 35% from beyond the arc for one of the tri captains for the Cardinals this season. We dip inside of five minutes to go in the first half, and Bohannon able to spit it off the square. One of the few times that Stephen Enoch has been out of position in this game, and Bohannon, a really nice spin move. 
Six points now for Bohannon in the first half. Today, the first of five straight home games for the Cardinals. And they've won 19 straight home openers. Kimball. Hesitation and spin. Not enough on it, Dan. Million. To that move. That's some defensive play by Enoch, though, to move, get himself in position. I think he's a little tired as well. Bentley knocked it away from McMahon and picked up a personal foul. That's the first on Bentley with the cards ahead. 36-21, first half from KFC Young Center. I had logo in the middle of the court, Dan. Bit of a throwback with that logo to the days of the 1980s when they were winning national titles in 1980 and 86. They haven't used this logo in quite some time, but that'll be on center court. Denny Crum Court here in Louisville, Kentucky, KFC Yum Center. I think it's a pretty cool look, Dan, throwback action. It's a very cool look, although I think back in the 80s, the Duncan Bird wasn't wearing Adidas sneakers, but <laughs> times change. And, and his shorts were a little higher. And Is that what you're trying to say? Is he change, wearing shorts? So. Maybe it's just feathers. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure that birds wear shorts. <laughs> All right, McMahon is at the free throw line. As we conclude our discussion on old school logos, McMahon's got the old school hairstyle and he's at the free throw line. High and tight and in. Well, you know, he's one of those guys that's almost like a uh, an intentional walk. When he goes to the line, you just say, give it two and... Dan, 95% a season to go from the line. 57 of 60 on free throw attempts. Don't forget coming up, Detroit Mercy, NC State. You want to check your local listings for that game right behind us. You know, we save time in baseball now. We don't have to throw four pitches. We just put up four fingers. When okay. he goes to the free line, just put up two fingers, give him two points, and let's go play. Eight points now for McMahon. In the first half, he's got a couple of three-pointers to his credit as well. 38-21. Strong drive knocked away as Quisenberry. We haven't called his name in quite some time, Dan. Well, he has only played four minutes in the game. Uh, they took him out. He was struggling a little bit, and he had two personal fouls. Quisenberry picked up two fouls very quickly and had to go to the bench. And see, with a guy like him who creates a lot of his offense by driving to the basket, two fouls can be a really limiting factor because you don't want to pick up that third on the charge. Inside the three-point line, a miss from Quisenberry. His teammates trying to clean it up, but they do. It's Bohannon. He's had a strong first half, Dan. Yeah, he has. He's been very aggressive. And now some full-court pressure by Youngstown State. And Sutton calls the timeout before he got the five-second call. Bohannon's got eight points in the first half. Youngstown State from Youngstown, Ohio, 540 miles from where we are today. And the preseason look, I know you love this, Dan, but the card's number three and number five in the country. Well, th this is a very interesting kind of thing this year because I think, Tom, the ACC is more unknown this year than it has been for a number of years. Of course, Duke and North Carolina up at the top. Not everybody's agreed with that. Virginia at number three. The, the, you know, the history is on their side. you got to give them the benefit of the doubt. But Louisville with a team of tremendous experience. We already said that. Uh, Jordan Wara, the leading candidate for ACC Player of the Year. But some interesting results so far. Florida State up there at number five. They lost that first game to Pitt. Georgia Tech beat NC State on the road. Uh, Virginia Tech won their first game. Not many people expected a lot from Mike Young's outfit, but they have played very well, not only in their first game, but in their second game. Well, it misses, can't get it back. By the way, Duke, the defending champs, they won in Charlotte against Florida State in the ACC Tournament Championship game a season ago. Second chance, baseline drive, hanging and scoring, Garrett Covington. McMahon was a little bit late getting over, so he could not stop and try to take a charge because he would have been in the restricted area. So he swiped at the ball, and that's usually doesn't work very well. 
Youngstown State now back into the zone. McMahon missed the three. It was Dwayne Sutton going up trying to grab the board. Help ball situation, and the arrow will favor the Penguins. One of the problems with playing the zone against guys like Louisville, not only do they shoot the three well, but they rebound the ball pretty well. And it's, sometimes it's very difficult to rebound the ball out of the zone if you're a team that's used to playing man-to-man. Quisenberry had to give it up. Latter stages of this first half. I think Covington was complaining that he might have gotten swiped by the defensive effort from Wara. And a foul against the Cardinals. That's a really good play by Quisenberry. He called for the screen. And Covington, I guess it was Thomas, went up and set the screen. And Quisenberry just went flying off that screen, took his hip and drove it into the hip of the big guy trying to come and help. Yehorn, Yehan, excuse me, just not in good position, but Quisenberry attacked him. Third personal foul for Yehan. Well, Youngstown State, they've left some points at the free throw line. Penguins are four of eight from the line. As we told you, they struggled against Teal College despite the big win. On Tuesday, they were just 12 and 22 from the free throw line, out of bounds, and back to Youngstown State. Particularly when you're playing in a game like this, in Youngstown State, uh, Tom Early, it looked like they might get blown out. They've done a nice job hanging in the game. But the inability to make free throws, that one was the front end of a one and one that was missed. You really need those if you're going to stay in this. Off-balance shot from Quisenberry. He hit the deck. Strong move from Cathcart. Doesn't get the result. Ends up in the hands of Quisenberry. He'll look over at his coach for some instruction. Well, with Gahan in foul trouble and Enoch on the bench with the rest, Louisville playing a small lineup. And the result is that Youngstown State gets multiple offensive rebounds. They're not shooting the ball well, but when you have that many opportunities, you have a chance. It's a 10-point game. That was a big-time move from Quisenberry, a behind-the-back dribble and a step-back three. And he's got five points. And Youngstown State strong on the offensive glass, leading the cards in that category in the first half. Wara, maybe a bit too much dribbling. Fight for the loose ball. One by the Penguins. Two on two. Quisenberry grabs it and fires. Short of the three. Wara decides not. That's a, re that's a really that's good idea by Wara. Had he been able to set sail immediately, he might have had a chance to get down the court for everybody else, but he stumbled. Good decision. 30 seconds to go in the half. Perry steps under, misses the little flip, and now with 25 seconds left, the shot clock is off. And Coach Calhoun wants a timeout. 38-28. 23.8 seconds to go in the first half. And again, Tom, they did a nice job just hanging in the game. Early in the ballgame, Louisville was making shots. Youngstown State was not. The Cards jumped out to a big lead. And now they're, they're on a 7-0 run to cut it back here to 10 points. So a timeout taken by the Penguins. Don't forget there's more ACC basketball. Right behind us, you want to check your local listings for Detroit Mercy at NC State, as Dan mentioned. A loss at home in their first game of the season to Kevin Keats and the Wolfpack. They'll take on Detroit Mercy. Coming up after the Cardinals and the Penguins. And the Penguins have the attention of second-year head coach Chris Mack. After nine seasons as the head coach at Xavier, where he won over 200 games, in fact, the most in school history, with 215 wins for the Musketeers. Cards have led by as many as 17 points in the first half. It's down to 10. And Mack. That's a pretty good list to be on. Piling up the wins. Danny Crum there at number nine. The Louisville defense, which was so good at keeping Youngstown State out of the lane early, has been less effective in the last 
six or seven minutes. Long way to go to catch Coach Crum with 675 <laughs> wins, the most in school history. Final seconds at Quisenberry. Oh, Dan with a three. Now you can't guard that. Wow. Eight points in the first half, and take a look at that score. Um, he was very pleased with the first ten minutes of the half, not quite so pleased with the second ten minutes of the half. He's just the fourth head coach in the last 49 years for this Louisville program. Such great tradition and history, 39 times for the NCAA tournament. That is the seventh most all-time amongst college basketball programs. Deep into the shot clock of their first possession. McMahon. Trying to create some daylight. Difficult shot, and he hit it. High degree of difficulty. He made it look easy. Again, shows you the progress of McMahon, but that was a really smart play for another reason. He was attacking Quisenberry. Remember, Quisenberry's got those two fouls. He had to sit a lot of minutes in the first half. McMahon to double digits. That's a With that jumper. Laura from Perry. Eleven points for Wara. Quisenberry knocked down a couple of late threes in the first half. Misfires there. Challenges McMahon and gets it to Wara, and he'll bend that rim again. Well, that's the way you want to start the second half if you're Louisville. Wara. With a couple of rim rattler. At 23 points to lead the way to victory. On the road at Miami in that ACC season opener on Tuesday for the Cardinals. Youngstown State has come out in this half and missed their first three shots. Cards have made their first three, and it helps when you're mixed in a couple of dunks early on in the second half. They started the game 11 for 11 from the floor before cooling off just a little bit. Wara behind the line. Shot is a tad askew. Quisenberry downshifting. And the follow is good. Quisenberry did the work. Bohannon cleaned it up. He's double digits with 10. Quisenberry really can get down the court. You got to try to get in front of him at some point. Cards working on a string of 19 straight home opening victories. Turn around, Enoch. Another perfect pass from Darius Perry. He's got eight assists in the game. And Enoch's got 15 points. Out of bounds, and it will stay with the Penguins. Tom, I will point out that when the Louisville offense sort of tailed off toward the end of the first half, it was when Enoch was on the bench. Enoch played 15 minutes in that first half. And again, with Malik Williams out, they don't have the two-headed monster inside that they had last year. That is a strong drive and bucket. Bohannon flying across the lane on the dribble for the Penguins and when, 12 points. When Bohannon can get the ball out on the perimeter with Enoch guarding him closely, he has an advantage in that he can put it down and go to the goal. That is off of the Cardinals, back to the Penguins. It's going to be hard for Enoch to guard Bohannon away from the basket. Mentioned this is the first ever meeting between the programs. Louisville is 18-2 all-time against the Horizon League. Wizenberry met at the rim by Wara and a foul on the play. Now you know, you cover in the scouting report, you say, well, okay, you got to stay in front of this guy, but that's just hard to do. Quisenberry absolutely makes a great first step there, gets around the corner, and then nobody can stop him. McMahon, it looked like had a chance to jump in there and draw a charge, but he faked at him and stepped away. Chris Mack, a little bit upset with that call, felt like it was a good block. Quisenberry, the sophomore from Springfield, Ohio. Quisenberry, 
I think it really hurt Youngstown State that he sat out so much time, about 15 minutes in the first half, because he can really play. One of two from the line and nine points for Quisenberry. Led him in their season opening victory against Teal College with 16 points. And was all conference second team a season ago. He needs very little time, does McMahon. You got to get right up on him. And even though he has shown the ability to drive the ball, you have to make Ryan McMahon drive the ball. You cannot let him shoot that three. 13 points and three threes for McMahon. Three of four from beyond the arc of the game for McMahon. Tight D by Perry on Quisenberry with the shot clock winding down. It's a tra traveling violation. That time, Darius Perry won the battle. The time before, we just showed you the replay. Quisenberry beat him and was able to get to the basket. That time, Perry moved his feet extremely well, and Quisenberry couldn't get by. I've really been impressed with the way Darius Perry has played on the defensive end today and just managing this offense. Perry the junior from Marietta, Georgia with the basketball now and he gives to Enoch. Straight away three. Enoch, Enoch does not shoot very many threes, but he shoots a pretty good percentage from out there. He was 14 of 39 from three-point range a season ago. Sutton for the authoritative board. Sutton still hadn't scored in the game today. <laughs> How about that move? 15 points, Jordan Wara. Tom, that's what we talk about with Wara, the completeness of his game. Now he drove the ball to the left of the rim and re leaned back with his right hand to drop it in. Covington able to tap it over to Quisenberry. He'll hang and miss. In tight quarters, another front run miss. Bohan and his frustration. And the cards walk it up. It's hard to get it over top of Stephen Enoch, 10, 6 feet 10. Sutton has not scored, had 16 points on the road against Miami. The move and two for Sutton. Sutton is one of those guys, though, who can help you even if he's not scoring. And that's what we've seen today. He's got a couple of rebounds, got a couple of assists. He's really been working hard on the defensive end. From right here in Louisville, Kentucky. Knocked away, Enoch. Knocked that one away from Bohannon. All he can do is smile on his way back up the court. Uh-oh. Now Perry needs to shoot that ball down. <laughs> he was literally a foot from the basket, and he tried to pass it. See Markel Johnson and NC State. They lost in overtime against Georgia Tech, 82-81. And that was on Tuesday. They are home against Detroit Mercy, and that follows us. You want to check your local listings for that game as ACC basketball on a Sunday continues. Of course, Detroit Mercy, another team in the Horizon League, just as Youngstown State. And Williamson, number 10 for Louisville in the game. I was impressed with him in the first half. He was very quiet. He really showed that he can play. He had four points and three rebounds in 12 minutes. Laura, 17 points for the All-American. And other than denying him the ball, there's very little that Youngstown State could do to guard that play once he caught the ball because he just turned immediately and stuck it in the basket. The guy's going to make a move that quickly. There's very little you can do. Ten assists now for Perry as well. That's a career high. Almost had the steal and tried to save it. Ball will stay with Youngstown State. Uh, I was talking about Perry before. Those 10 assists, obviously a career high. That's pretty impressive. But he has done a really nice job defensively. He's only turned the ball over one time. As you watch him there on defense, he doesn't back away. He keeps going toward the offensive player, forces the offensive player dribbling the ball to back up. That's about as well as you can do it on the defensive end. Making the play without fouling. He's out of the lineup right now. Lamar Fresh Kimball has come in. He wears zero for the cards. This is McMahon. McMahon. Tough shot. In transition.
transition, Quisenberry. Cathcart on the wing for three. Right back to McMahon. Well, that was a good look, and Cathcart's a guy you don't mind shooting that ball from out there. Just three of 18 from beyond the arc for the Penguins. Knocked away Sutton. Wara tees up the three ball. Williamson couldn't run it down. Quisenberry hesitation. But dribble. Out of bounds. Off for the quiz. And back to Louisville. Tom, you've heard the expression that somebody, a guy's trying to make something happen, and that's not always the best idea. He drives the ball into a big crowd, has it knocked away. But that's what Quisenberry wants to do. He's aggressive. He's going to push the ball at you. He's going to try to attract the, attack the basket as his first option. And for the most part today, Louisville has played him pretty effectively. Wara, mid-range game. He gets the soft bounce here at KFC Yum Center. That ball was actually well short, but the spin he had on it, it hit and just climbed over the rim. 19 points, Wara. Largest lead of the game for Louisville. Sutton the interception. Gives it to McMahon. That's a three. Very high attempt on the rebound. Big bounce off the rim and out of bounds. And Youngstown State awarded the basketball. Well, Ryan McMahon is as dangerous as any player in college basketball shooting the three in transition. And that was just a tremendous pass by Dwayne Sutton to recognize that McMahon was right there and just a little dump off. They don't all go in, though. McMahon is 3 for 5 from beyond the arc. And that'll end an 11-0 run over the last four and a half minutes for Louisville. Devin Morgan. McMahon. Whips it over to Williamson. Rebound Thomas. Eight rebounds now for Jameer Thomas for the Penguins. Morgan went behind the back, around the screen, and lays it in. And Bohannon cluttered up that lane for Morgan. Morgan got cut off by Kimball, but then he put that big body between himself and Kimball and was able to get into the lane. Back to the zone. Wara tripped up. Coming out of that corner. Devin Morgan has five points around the defenders through traffic. Double against Miami, and he's well on the way to that again today. Made four three-pointers in that victory against the Canes. And he's going to take a breather at the moment. on the block, sends it back out. Fight for the rebound, one. Well, again, Thomas. Enoch has had two outstanding passes out of the post when he's been double teamed, getting guys wide open shots. They have just missed them. Enoch has 15 points, McMahon 13. And the 19 from War, those are your top scorers for Louisville. Bohannon leads the way with 12. They come up empty on this possession. McMahon. The three is good. Gwen Slazinski. Sorry, Dan. Slazinski, the freshman. He's a guy who came back from an appendectomy in mid-October. Played in an exhibition game 12 days later. Well, they like him. He's got the reputation as a hard worker. Somebody who understands what they want him to do out there. They're just pretty deep at that particular spot. But that's nice. You get your chance. You come in the game and you drill a three. Slazinski in the box score for Louisville. Up 60 to 41. Halfway home in the second half, and who's got the board? It's Slazinski. Man was fouled by Devin Morgan. 
Second on Morgan. Now, McMahon has got to be a little bit careful out there because there's the new rule against flopping. And when you're talking about flopping, that the officials are told not just to look for a guy who looks like he's trying to take a charge and flops on the ground, but as the guys dribble in the ball, you know sometimes they put their pull their heads back and put their bodies in such a position that it looks like they got fouled. And that time McMahon did get fouled, but you got to watch those kind of maneuvers. You might get warned. McMahon missed on one end. And now free throws are coming for the Penguins on the other end as Kimball picks up his first personal foul. For the most part, Louisville has been able to get back and prevent Youngstown State from doing too much damage in transition. Louisville has dominated the transition opportunities. Youngstown State joining Division I for the 0 2 season. And against ranked opponents, since that point, they are 1-25. and 21 since joining Division I against ranked opponents. That win came back in 1952 against number 19, LaSalle, 68-57. Only win in school history against a ranked opponent. They've got an uphill climb here in the second half. That closed the gap to just seven at halftime. They haven't made shots in this half, Tom. That's one of the reasons they were able to close the gap is they made shots. And that sounds very simplistic, but it's true. You make shots, the game's pretty easy, just like that. Devin Morgan, eight points prior to that shot. Just 23% from the floor in the second half for Youngstown State. That was really good patience by Youngstown State. They didn't panic or try to force up a tough one. McMahon, three ball. And Morgan put his... Hands, palms up, saying, what am I supposed to do? Well, you're supposed to get a little closer to that guy. 16 points. Ryan McMahon, the senior from Sarasota, Florida. And then matches his total on Tuesday at Miami in the win. Also had 16. Foster in the box score. First bucket. Good pass to Kim Bolton, McMahon. to the Penguins. Again, Louisville does a great job getting back and setting the defense. So we're inside of eight minutes now to go in the second half. Tom Wormy, Dan Bonner, all outstanding ACC basketball production crew with you from Louisville, Kentucky, KFC Young Center at 3.30 on the East Coast. I think if you're Louisville, you're okay if Thomas is going to shoot facing jumpers. If you're Youngstown State, you may not be okay with Slazinski shooting facing three. Second three of the game, Slazinski. It is 20. Quinn Slazinski, two for two from beyond the arc, seven made in total, and four from McMahon for three pointers, Dan. Louisville has not shot the three, just did, have not shot the three well in the second half, but Slazinski coming off the bench, knocking down both of his efforts, and McMahon hitting that one. They have suddenly, they were shooting about 16%, now they're up to 36% in the second half. But Slazinski, you know, you're a freshman, you're trying to come in on a veteran team to carve out a role. And if you can come off the bench and knock down a couple of threes, that is a great role <laughs> to assume. Cards were top third in the league last year as far as team three-point percentage was concerned. 34% as a team. And they made about nine per game. They are seven of 19 on threes in this game. Youngstown State is five of 22. From beyond 22 feet, one and three-quarter inches away. As you mentioned, Tom, that is the international distance. It doesn't roll off the tongue like 20 feet, 9 inches away. Does. Although that line is still out there for the women's side. Well, and that's, it's, you can clearly see the difference. The yes. white line is the old line. The black line is it's, the new one. It's in black and white right in front of us. Oh, don't start. <laughs> You're going to be banned Dan, this. this is year 40, and it's going to be your best, my friend. Dan Bonner, 40 years of broadcasting collegiate basketball. And we congratulate Dan on that. Momentous mark. 
Going to be a great year in the ACC, and Louisville's going to be a big part of it. So much talent up and down the league. Easy block, Enoch. Penguins got it back, and they lay it in. Enoch could have almost grabbed that one out of the air, and maybe he should have. He bounced it off the floor. But Bohannon was able to recover it. Third block for Enoch. And one thing you have to say about Youngstown State, they have not backed away. Wara. Bohannon. Foster had himself a lane to the basket and lost the ball trying to go behind his back. Didn't need that behind the back dribble. Pull up, shoot a little jumper. Game clock goes inside of six minutes. Shot clock down to seven. Morgan dribbling clinic. Jumper all net. Now that was not bad defense by Jordan War. He did a nice job moving his feet at six feet eight, staying in front of the opponent's point guard. But Morgan just made a nice shot. Morgan's got 10 points. He made 60 three-pointers last season. That led the team. Really impressed with how hard Enoch works on the inside and doesn't seem to get discouraged when he doesn't get the ball. Perry stop and start. Knocked to the floor and a foul with 5.23 to go in regulation. Darius Perry will head to the free throw line. And Darius Perry, in his career at Louisville, has had times where he gets going a little bit too fast. Sometimes when he misses a shot in the past, he let it get to him and affect him for a couple of plays. But what I've seen so far this year, watching him play on television and seeing him here in person, he's much more under control. That's going to make this very happy. One of the questions they had was their point guard position. Christian Cunningham coming in as a graduate transfer last year and performing very well in that spot. They have Fresh Kimball in this year in the same position, but Darius Perry, one of the holdovers, and he has shown you his skills today defensively with assist, makes a couple of free throws. Six points for Perry, Dan. He's got 10 assists. That's a career high. And he's only turned it over one time in 23 minutes of action against Youngstown State. Enoch defending. Thomas couldn't get it to fall. All the way out to Perry. Wara, catch and release. Rapid play, Quisenberry. Just kind of left it for Thomas. I don't know that he was leaving it for Thomas. <laughs> that was blocked by Sutton. He left it for anybody, and Thomas happened to be closest to the basket. I thought he was leaving it for Morgan. <laughs> that one is left for Thomas by Devin Morgan. And that's a better that's a better spot to deposit the ball into Thomas's hands. 68-52, late in the second half. Cardinals trying to improve to 2-0 on this young season. Turnaround from Enoch. Mm -hmm. Got a nice bounce off the glass and in. Well, again, that's another one with his left hand. He looks so comfortable using either the left hand or the right hand, and he does not take a lot of time. Some big guys catch the ball in there, and they have to collect themselves. He catches it and shoots it. That's 17 points for Enoch. Here's Perry. Away Perry. This is three on one behind the back to Twenty-one points now for Wara. Quisenberry pumps up a three and misses. Well, that was a great play by Perry because he he had a pretty tough pass if he was going to try to make it to Nickelberry, but he saw Wara coming from behind and made a great play. Enoch tried to rip the rim off his hinges in the pass from Perry. Well, at that time, uh, Enoch maybe should have taken a little bit of time, but the time before Perry, he sees Wara coming from behind him, the behind-the-back pass with his left hand, Louisville cruising. For all of the heroes who serve us, T-Mobile is offering 50% off family lines for misses and the schedule coming up for Chris Mack and the cards. Next up, it's Indiana State.
The game's on Wednesday. Next conference game is early December at home against Pittsburgh, Friday, December 6th. There is a bit of a history with Indiana State and Louisville. We'll get to that in just a moment, Dan. I know you can't wait to hear what I'm about to say. I, I'm on the edge of my seat, Tom. <laughs> McMahon. He's got four three-point baskets in this game to match the four he made against Miami on Tuesday for the season opening victory on the road in ACC play for Louisville. Spinning McMahon kicks it out. Perry, 12 assists in the game. And two more points. He's got eight. So, Dan, let me take you back to 1948. Okay, all right. Louisville won the NAIB National Championship. That's the forerunner to the NAIA. They beat Indiana State the title game 82 to 70. Indiana State was coached by John Wood. 1948. So that's a long history between those two programs, and they'll play again on Wednesday right here in Europe. Perry couldn't spin away. I know it takes a lot to impress you, Dan. <laughs> I will take your silence as a vote of confidence in my well, what, what, what really can one say in response to that? <laughs> to dig up historical nuggets. Williamson missed on the tip. Enoch also missed from short range. Of course, the Cards also boast the national titles in 1980 and 86 and a championship season in 2013. Perry able to grab it, foul on the play against the Penguins. Covington picked up the foul. The Works Tryback 3-in-1 Easy Switch from Blow to Vac is a game changer and a time saver. Your yard work champion. 74-52, and if you're wondering, no, Dan did not cover that 1948. NAIB National Championship game. We continue. Perry. Skillful, Dan. Calculating that angle. He has shown the ability not only to play in transition, but now in the half-court set to be able to get by. He's always been quick. He's got pretty good strength. He's got a double-double in this game. And again, a nice defensive job there, preventing Quisenberry from getting by him to go to the basket. Fight for the loose ball. Held ball situation. The Perry double-double is the first of his career with the 12 assists and 10 points. Keith Otto comes into the game, graduate student, transfer from Richmond. And Darius Perry with the double-double, the first of his career at 12 assists for Perry. And he'll do a little dance. Well, Perry had a pretty good line. He had four rebounds as well, Tom. He had, an, he had a, you know, in addition to those 12 assists, he also had a steal and only one turnover, as you pointed out. So just 40 seconds to go. And a foul called on the play. So this is going to be 20 straight home opening victories for Louisville. They've now won 51 straight home games in the month of November. In the last 28 years. 37-0 in November prior to today. And now 38-0 inside KFC Young Center in this month. 36 straight non-conference wins as well in this facility. Tenth year in the building. It's hard to believe that this is their tenth year in the building. It seems like it just opened the, the other day. And it's, a, it's still a great building car. An amazing venue for college basketball. Well, it's not only a venue for college basketball. They have all kinds of concerts in here. Last this night? is yeah. really a top location. For entertainment. Soul music concert in here last night. 
This will be the 146th Louisville victory in this building. Williamson on the drive. He's got six points. Well, he has shown some flashes in the first couple of games, and that's exactly the kind of thing that you just saw right there that makes him so dangerous. He has the strength and the power to get to the basket, but then he's got a smooth finish once he gets there. Keep in mind, this was a seven-point game at halftime. The second half belongs to the Cardinals. 4.4 seconds on the clock. Free throws upcoming. So Chris Mack's team's going to be 2-0. and and part of the problem, if it's really a problem for this Louisville team, is dealing with the expectations that have been placed on this team. They, Louisville's obviously a very good team. They've got guys who are out right at the moment. Uh, David Johnson and uh, Malik Williams, who they expect to have back sometime by the end of November or the beginning of December. So they are deep, they are talented, but they are not going to go out on the court and beat everybody 120 to 30. You know, the other teams practice too. Today, Dan, the final is 78-55. Coach Chris Mack and the Louisville Cardinals. That is now 20 straight home opening victories for this Louisville program. Number five in the nation, 2-0 on the season. After the conference win at Miami on Tuesday, they follow it up with a 78-55 win against Youngstown State. Dan, it was relatively close at halftime. At the end of the game, it simply wasn't. Well, I think Louisville really asserted. We talked about Louisville needing to play to their strengths, and I think that's what they did, particularly in the second half. And a very scrappy Youngstown State team, I thought Louisville defended them extremely well. Pressed with the play of Jordan Wara and his teammates. Up and down the roster, a complete team effort and a victory against Youngstown State. And there is so much more to come from Louisville, Kentucky. Please stay with us.